Hello, friends. Always uh, an honor for me um, to take some time to share with you some of what is moving in my consciousness. And one of the big challenges, the basic challenge for me, is that I tend to see and sense and live in a space of a very big picture, uh, a deep ground from which I then understand how much is emerging in our world or how different layers of what we live inside of as our experience as human beings, how those layers influence and affect each other. And then it's, a, it's always a challenge for me to know where to start because my mind is looking at the big picture. So today, really what I want to talk to you about, and I think it's important in, our, in the kind of unprecedented change that we're seeing in our world, is about the stories that we, we live inside of all the time. So when we, when we take a more close-up picture, a more narrow picture, we see the election cycle coming in the U.S. and the arguments of the partisan politics that is here and in many other countries. We, we, we are learning to, or beginning to be unable to trust any form of information that comes to us, or at least we're being told we can't trust it, the whole concept of fake news. We just watched the assassination of a journalist there are almost genocidal wars going on. There are alliances between the United States and other countries that don't serve human rights and but economic power. We listen to the talk of politicians, all of that. And we wonder what to do. And we wonder, it, it is a kind of insanity. And it, it's hard to watch. It's hard to take in and hold with a larger picture. So one thing I would like to start with today is to just get us to understand how deeply embedded in stories we are, and have always been. For example, we have the story of our own individuality. We believe that we are somehow separate selves, yet even the use of language is inherited, and the evolution of a language is, is inherited, passed down to us. So we live inside of a story about being separate when we're truly not. When our consciousness is young, pointed out, is both individual and simultaneously collective, the collective unconscious influencing so much of how we experience ourselves and imagine ourselves to have a personal individual consciousness. So the story of individuality isn't really true. And that's just one. And then we start to get into the stories that we as individuals are embedded in, such as where we were born, our story of our origin, um, so that, that becomes national, nationality. Or, and, and then the arguments about the nature of history within our nation states. Um, if we have an indigenous people's history of what happens in their world, it's so different than the story that uh, the people who are in the dominant cultural, social um, order tell about the story. So we are embedded in that kind of story. We're embedded in the story of our family of origin, the history of our grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-parents. We're embedded in the stories that we are raised with about our religion um, and the stories the religion uses to identify itself. Um, and most of us simply accept these identities. We accept the notion of I'm individual and separate. We accept the notion I'm American or French or Russian or Chinese. We accept the identity of, of being a survivor, uh, of being a victim, of being a, in power. We, we, the whole story that rationalizes power. Imagine calling someone the crown prince in Saudi Arabia. Think of the stories and the history. Someone becomes the crown prince in Saudi Arabia because 100 years ago, European countries decided to give power to one small tribe, which then discovered it was sitting on top of oil. And so, and through no creativity of its own, ends up fabulously wealthy. And this is going on all the time. The important thing for us to understand is that every person that you're talking to, and including yourself, until you become conscious of these stories, you are the victim of the stories. We could almost say that human beings at this level that we call ego and me and I in the separate sense is actually almost an, a, a robot. 
It's a program. We've been programmed by socialization. We've been programmed by place of birth. We've been programmed by history. We've been programmed by religion. We've been programmed by nationality. And this is why it's almost impossible for us to find some kind of shared values. They're there deep in our religions, but then the religions co-opt identity. But at the root of all the religions, I believe, is a deep understanding that the fundamental ground of, of existence and of this universe is, is love, and that the, the love of each other becomes maybe the fundamental and primary activity of human beings, the only one anywhere in this world that will actually give us a chance to unify. But none of that can happen when the love that we understand is the love that we have for those that we identify with, or those layers of identity and story that we're inside of. So we have to be able to gradually, gradually disconnect ourselves, see these stories, recognize that they have a function. I function as an American. I'm going to vote in the election cycle that's coming up. Um, I know that my vote is not all that significant, and that is going to be the topic of a, of a different video that I'd like to make about the problem with government. But the point is, I am an American citizen. I get to vote. You're a French citizen. You get to vote. Um, if you're a Russian citizen, you get to vote, but it's meaningless. <clears throat> because there we have a different story that's being told and, and inculcated. None of us are going to be able to really find a way to make a sane life on this planet until we truly take the time to look at the stories that we live inside of, the national stories, the national identities, the religious stories and religious identities, the place of location, uh, where we're born, and the local tribal identities, the family of origin identities, and on and on, coming down to the most fundamental and illusory of all identities, that I'm a separate individual, that I'm a separate self. Yep, it's true at the level of my body, and it isn't even true there. It's true because you see me and I see you. But if I'm in a room of people that are loving, I have a healthier body than if I'm in a room of people that distrust each other. If I'm in a, a space of deep listening and shared communion and shared investigation and shared discovery, I'm a, a more active, my mind is healthier, the body is functioning better, the immune system is functioning better, the environment is constantly influencing even what we mean by body. So just that illusion. And then, of course, it, that plays back to, and that'll be the subject of a different talk, the responsibility we have as an individual to help create an atmosphere that makes it important, makes it rich and meaningful for us to share lives with each other, where our stories are seen, we all look, we can tell our stories, we can share our, our backgrounds, and we don't derive our identity from any of that. We derive our identity from the quality of attention and listening and communication and appreciation we have of the wonderful diversity. So take some time to begin to realize that you are far more than your stories and that the deepest story is no story at all. Thank you for sharing a bit of your time with me. I send you love and blessings. Get fascinated with the amazing, amazing levels of unconsciousness and programming that we live inside of. And let's free ourselves from those programs. <laughs>